Compound inequalities are inequalities where the variable numbers or the variable amounts are usually either between two uh, other values or greater than one and less than another. In other words, it's Compound inequalities are inequalities where the variables that we can have are either between two values or greater than one value and less than another value. In other words, it's really two inequalities in one statement. If we take a look at our first example here, we see that, remember that when we're using inequalities on a number line, we're graphing what the variable can be. So we have here, the variable can either be negative 40 or it can be less than 60, it can't actually be 60, or it can be any of the numbers in between. So x, if we're saying this variable is x, x can be greater than negative 40, so it's bigger than negative 40, or equal to negative 40, but it has to be less than 60, and it can't be 60. So x is greater than or equal to negative 40, but less than 60. In the second example, we see that x can be smaller than negative 2, although it can't be negative 2. So x can be smaller than negative 2, and there's no limit. It can just keep going as smaller, much smaller as it wants. Or it can be bigger than 1. x is greater than 1. So we have two sort of possibilities. x is everything this way, or x is everything this way. And then in our last example, we can see that x is less than negative 1, or it's equal to negative 1. So it can be negative 1, because this is filled in, or it's anything smaller. Otherwise, x needs to be bigger than or equal to negative or positive 4. So x is positive 4 or bigger, or it's negative 1 or smaller. The trick to graphing compound inequalities is to recall that what we're doing is graphing what x can be. So as long as the only things we mark on our graph are numbers that x is qualified to be, it should be pretty simple. So let's take a look at what we have here. This says that x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So x can be negative 4 equal to, and it can be greater than negative 4, so we're going to shade this way. Then it says, but x needs to be less than or equal to 6. So it can only go as far as 6 which it can be because it says it's greater than or equal to. So we're going to shade between negative 4 and positive 6, and those are the numbers that x can be, so those are the numbers that should be shaded. Now in the second example, we have x is less than 0 or greater than 2. So x is something smaller than 0, but it can't be 0, so we draw an open circle at 0, and then we shade, draw an open circle there over the graph, there we go, and then we shade to the left because x is anything smaller than that, and then it says x can be greater than 2, so it can't be 2 either, but it can be anything bigger than that, so then we shade to the right, again shading the things that x can be. And then in example part 3 here, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 8, so we start at negative 8 here, and it can be negative 8, so it would be shaded to the right, greater than or equal to negative 8, so less negative, or less than or equal to negative 20. So again, it can be negative 20, or it can be anything smaller. So x can be anything negative 20 or littler, or negative 8 or bigger.